morning and welcome back. How are you doing today? It's great to see you. Hope you're well. Today I'm doing a taste test. I think it's been far too long since I've sat down with you and had a taste test and had a bit of a chin wag. So today I'm doing a taste test of my Babylon wine. They very kindly sent me a red and a rosy wine to make up and test. I have actually filmed all the footage of me making the wine, step by step by step, but I haven't yet had chance to edit the videos. It's there somewhere on my memory card on the camera. I just haven't actually plugged it in and found the time to edit it all together. So I will be doing that at some point. And when I do, I will link it up by here. And if you want to watch the detailed instructions and doing, of the wine. So, two bottles today, red and a rosé. I'm going to start with the rosé. So I made this rosé wine along with the red and it's been sat in a demijohn for about four weeks maturing. They do say on the instructions you can drink it young but it will improve with age. I had my initial sip when I was putting it in the demijohns and very delicate, very lovely, awesome. And indeed, it would have been very much drinkable at that point in time. Which is always great when you have a kit wine that is drinkable from the get-go. But I'm really interested in seeing if it's improved with a month in a demijohn. So, let's pour a glass. Well, the colour I'm really impressed with. It's darker than I thought it would be. It's more of a, a pale red. I wouldn't really call this a rosé. But that's what I like. I prefer red wines over white wines. So it's brilliant to have a rosé that is on the darker side of pale. It smells really fruity and fresh as well. And I think it has definitely improved with that time in the demijohn. It has become more full flavoured and rounded. There is this very subtle bouquet to it, but on the tongue it sits really well. There's a good venosity and, and density to the wine. I haven't chilled this, and I don't think it would really handle chilling. It doesn't seem to need it really. It might well be delicious chilled. I might put a bottle in the fridge for later on tonight and just see if it does change the flavour at all. But I don't think it really needs to be chilled as such. To be honest, it's not very warm in this shipping container at the moment. It's more chilly. I'm not sure what fruits I can really pick up, what might have gone into the ingredients, into that mix of mixed berries and things that look delicious, like a nibble. But I'm getting some plums, I'm getting some grapes, I'm getting, there's a slight apple or pearish flavor coming through as well. So I think there might've been some dried apple in that mix. And also a few currants, it has this black currency, almost black currant squash, flavour on the back of the tongue of those end notes. But I really like it. I haven't done the costing, so I haven't worked out how expensive it is per bottle. But it does compare price-wise with the lower end of the range that you would pay for a kit wine, a 30 bottle kit. This is a mid-range quality wine for a entry-level price. Overall, I'm really impressed with the instructions, the kit, the packaging, all really good, apart from that one spelling mistake that bugged me. But I am really impressed with the wine, the end result of the rosé. The white, I really enjoyed, and so did my guests. The rosé, I'm sure other people will enjoy as well, if I serve it to them, if I don't keep it all for myself. Well, that's the rosé covered. And now time to move on to the red. One issue, though, I don't have a spare glass handy around me, so it has to be done. Right, red. The red. Again, I made it at the same time as the rosé, but I have been bottling it and drinking quite a few of the bottles recently. So this isn't my first taste test of this particular Babylon red wine. So let's pour a glass. When I tried this wine initially, when I first started to bottle it, my first thoughts were, it's beetroot wine. It tasted like beetroot. It had this earthy, rich, 
beetroot flavour coming through on the nose and on the tongue. And my, I was just like, well, that's beetroot wine. It, I love beetroot wine, I do. Haven't actually made a video about it, but I will. But it did have this really rich beetroot aroma and taste to it. But as time has progressed and the wine matured, that density of that earthy beetroot flavour has disappeared. There is still that earthy undertone to it. It's a, it's a moody wine. It's had time to mature now, about a month. And it has lost a great deal of that earthy beetrootness. I'd still pick up a hint of that earthy, rich beetrootness. And to be honest, I don't know if that's only because I was aware of it when I first had a sample, but it seems to have evaporated. It seems to have evaporated and just left a tiny, tiny marginal hint of earthiness. And, and with this wine as well, I'm getting a great deal of black cherry with it and chocolate notes. It's really rich. There's a slight hint of oakiness as well, which I think might go hand in hand with that earthiness. It has that oaky, earthy texture. It's a heavy wine. It's a moody, dark. It's a wine you want to sit with by the fire or enjoy with a rich, roast, greasy duck. That'd be ideal. Whereas the rosé, oh, fish, definitely fish, lobster, salmon, it would go really, really well. But this be this beetroot is not beetroot. Honestly, it might be beetroot, they might have used beetroot, I don't know what went into it. If you pick up beetroot, or if you are the manufacturer who sent me this wonderful wine, tell me, was the beetroot in that mix, or was it just pure grape crush? Anyway, again, value-wise, I think this is a medium-level wine kit for quite an entry-level price. I'm impressed with... The kit, I'm impressed with the ingredients, I'm really impressed with the end result. And I do think, if I was to recommend a wine kit to someone, I would put this down as a firm suggestion. And that's not because they sent me a freebie, it's because I rate this wine. You know me and my reviews, especially wines that I make myself. I always pack a punch, and if a wine isn't good, if a wine doesn't work out to be as I want it, I tell you. It's just a basic, honest review. Look at my kidney bean wine, or my onion wine. I would not recommend making those at all, ever. And they are my own personal recipes that I created. But this wine, I would say, if you want an entry-level, price-wise, wine kit, go for one of these. There are other wine kits out there that I would also suggest, but this one is slightly different because it doesn't come in a tin of concentrate that they actually send you dried fruits to make your wine from. And that is a big selling point, it's their USP. It is different, it is not the conventional tin of gloop that other manufacturers and wine kits send you. The rosé wine took about two weeks longer to ferment than the red did. The red was ready about two weeks before the rosé. And both buckets were kept next to each other on the same heat pad in the same environment. So I don't know why the red finished fermenting first and reached that specific gravity that I wanted. The rosé was still dawdling and taking its time and taking its time. So that's something to consider as well, that the instructions might say, wait a week. But the rosé was two weeks behind the red. Instructions in wine kits are developed to be at the optimum temperature and at the optimum environmental conditions. And quite often, your wine kit will go above the times that the instructions give. So you really want to learn to read your wines better than you read the instructions. The instructions are there as a guideline, not a precise doctrine that you have to follow religiously. So read your wines, and that is, and then that way you'll make better wines, which is what I want. That's what this channel is all about, helping you to make better wines and enjoy better wines for less money. Fantastic, right then. Oh yes, 
I hear you asked, what's up with the baked beans? Why the baked beans? That's weird, that's odd, that's different. Am I gonna make baked bean wine next? Now you've given me an idea. I might do. But if you want to know why the tin of baked beans, then watch this video up by here and I will see you in the next episode. So you have fun now.